Greetings, everybody. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel commentary series. We're going to do Ezekiel chapter 34, starting in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John 8:12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I did an entire Bible study on shepherds, the false shepherds and the good shepherd. And I'll probably have it in the link to the description in the description and or the comments section. Also, for uh, I have a playlist section on my home page. And there's a link to the shepherds and pastors on the community page. A lot of good information on the community page. Some of it's, I don't know. But uh, I search, I spend every day going through the news, searching for relevant stories. And uh, if I was looking for corruption, I could spend uh, hours every day writing a book. So I try to pick and choose the stuff that's really kind of relevant to what's uh, Bible prophecy and what have you. So... I will, uh, you know, take a look at the playlist. I got a lot of information there. For those of you that are new to the Bible, probably the best things you could look at is uh, You Only Have I Known playlist, Abraham's, uh, well, covenants in the Bible, Abraham's covenant, and then the angels that sinned. Those three playlists oh, I would give you when you open the Bible up it'll uh, it'll actually make sense if you go to a demon nominational church well they hide everything they tell you the Antichrist are God's chosen people and then they tell you that God's real chosen people who are the believers are just a bunch of Gentiles grafted into this Antichrist tree uh, you know, it's no wonder people don't believe the Bible. There was one guy, I forget who it was. He believed as a child. And then he fell away. And everybody asked him, well, why did you fall away? He says, well, all the churches tell me that you know who's or God's chosen people. And when I went through the Bible and looked at all the promises that God made to his people, the you-know-whos didn't fulfill any of those promises. So I concluded that God was a liar. Well, that was your first mistake. You should have looked at who did fulfill all those promises. And then you would have known who God's true chosen people are. Instead of listening to pastors, paid off pastors that are a bunch of liars. But they'll get theirs one day. I'm going to be, well, I shouldn't say pleased, but uh, one day I'm sure that the pastors that preach for gain They'll get theirs one day. And everybody thinks all these TV preachers are going to be walking on streets of gold. Yeah, maybe the golden flames of, well, the Lord will make that choice, not me. All right, so let's get going here. All right, Ezekiel 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, boy, that phrase happens a lot in Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Against the prophets of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe 
Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do not uh, that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Now contrast that with Christ. Christ healed the sick. He bound up the brokenhearted. He sought that which, which was lost. I mean, <laughs> that's a, you know, I, I could do an entire Bible study, well, I have, on all those things about Christ being the good shepherd. Well, I already have, but yeah. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them, and they were scattered, because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains, and upon every high hill. Why did God's sheep Worship upon the high places. Why do they worship the devils? Uh, they didn't have a shepherd to tell them otherwise. Very few true shepherds. You know, the kings of Israel, there were very, very few kings of Israel that were good. Very few. And I'm talking about Israel and Judah. Judah. Very few. And oftentimes, if you were a prophet and you warned the people, you ended up dead. Well, what happened to all the apostles? Ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith. The only two apostles that didn't die for their faith was Judas Iscariot, because he killed himself, and John on the Isle of Patmos. He's the one that wrote the book of Revelation. I mean, <laughs> those were the only two. Legend has it they tried to kill John and they couldn't do it. I don't know how true that is, but it's, you know, that's why they banished him to the Isle of Patmos because they tried to kill him and they couldn't do it. And there's going to be I think it's five months when uh, people will seek death and there'll be no death on the earth. They won't be able to die. It's in the book of Revelation. I think that's when the locusts, those uh, scorpion type locust things happen. Verse 6, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did seek, and none, I'm sorry, and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock, 
but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. Ooh. All right, well, you know I got to read a New Testament witness to this. Book of John, chapter 10, verse 23 through 29. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Hmm. All right, let's go back. Ezekiel 34, verse 12. 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day when he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock, and I will cause them to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost, and bring them, and bring again that which was driven away, and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. In Matthew 15, 24, But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In Matthew 10, 6, Jesus tells his disciples, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Hmm. I mean, you know, 
Read Matthew, well, I'm sorry. Read Luke chapter 15 if you want to know about the sheep. Really good chapter. But I don't want to make this a, well, we could take a look, I guess. All right, Luke 15, verse 3. And he, Jesus, spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons, which need no repentance. And when you hear people say, oh, well, repenting doesn't mean turning from sin. Well, what did Jesus just say here? I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner, one sinner, one sinner that repenteth, sinner that repenteth. More than over 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. Oh, Chaplain Bob, re repenting doesn't mean uh, turning from sin. Oh, really? What does it mean? Uh, just change your mind from believing, you know, unbelief to believing. Okay, if you say so. So, you don't preach against sin? No, I just want people to believe in Jesus. Well, guess what? Let's take a look at something. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Verse 19, here's the punchline. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Oh, just believe in God and you're saved. Well, what can I tell you? The devil believes. Is the devil saved? Absolutely not. And his works are evil. And I'm not saying that good works uh, get you to heaven. No, you're saved by grace. But works always follow true faith. They do. I mean, you know, that's how you know an apple tree is an apple tree. It produces apples. An apple tree doesn't produce apples to, to become an apple tree. An apple tree produces apples because it is an apple tree. And if it doesn't produce apples, what good is it? Chop it down, use it for firewood in the wintertime, and your, uh, you know, fireplace... Smoke up the chimney and plant another tree there that will produce fruit, right? Think God's kingdom's any different? I don't. So, verse 16, Ezekiel 34. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, 
between the Rams and the He Goats. Oh boy. What does the Bible say? You know, the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left. The sheep go to eternal life and the goats go into eternal punishment. Uh, yeah. Verse 18. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters. But ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. Because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder and pushed all the diseased with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them. Do you know this is a messianic prophecy right here? And I will set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. Now remember, King David is dead. Well, his body, anyways. And I've had people say, oh, well, Jesus is not from Judah. He's from, I forget, I think they said Joseph or some other thing. No, no. The Bible, Hebrew says that Christ came from Judah. You can read the book of Luke, the genealogy. Christ comes from Judah, the king tribe. Christ was of the line of David. David was from the line of Judah. I don't know where people get this. He was from Joseph. I don't know where they get that from. Not the Bible. I know the Bible too well to fall for that kind of stuff. You know, that's the kind of stuff that ruins people's faith. It's when they listen to other people and take their stuff away from what the Bible says. But Christ is of the line of David, in the flesh anyways. Well, through, um, uh, through Joseph's line. Mary and Elizabeth, Elizabeth was John the Baptist's mother, but uh, Mary and Elizabeth were of the tribe of Levi. So, yeah. A merging of the king and priesthood. So verse 23, And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. I could probably do an hour study on Jesus the Good Shepherd. But I think I already did it, and I'm going to put, post a link to that uh, hour something video I did. And you can watch it if you're interested, you know. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. And will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. 
and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Lord, when I have broken the bands of their yoke, and delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. People, this is the Messianic age right here. I mean, there's no other way around it. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. And if you don't think the heathens are in charge right now, you're not paying attention. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beast of the land devour them. And I wonder if it's a two-legged beast. But they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown. And they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. What is this plant of renown? Let's take a look. Well, I my opinion is Revelation 22 and verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. A pure river of water of life, Chris, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, the tree of life, which bear twelve manners, twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Hmm, tree of life. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And I hope that I'm serving him properly. So back to Ezekiel 34, 29. And I will raise up for them a plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land, neither bear the shame of the heathen any more. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them. Thus shall they know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, even the house of Israel, are my people, saith the Lord God. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3. All right, Galatians 3, verse 26. Another reason why they hate Paul. Paul wrote a good portion of the New Testament. Verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Well, unless you go to John Hagee's church, you know, then the unbelieving you-know-whos are exalted above all measure. But that's not what Paul says. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, his children. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 
And there you go, people. The sheep of his pasture. And the good shepherd is Christ. And that concludes this Bible lesson. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.